you're a good man. I like you guys a lot. And uh, it's so awesome to be on this call with you and uh, just uh, challenge each other, encourage each other, uh, lift each other in the direction of just uh, being men of integrity, uh, being men who are called to greatness and uh, being there for one another. And uh, hopefully this will be an encouragement to you. Uh, I find it rather interesting that last week I spoke out of a, a verse that just prompted me, let your gentleness be evident to all the Lord is near. That verse out of uh, Philippians chapter four in my devotions um, just really uh, gripped me. And I just felt I had to speak about that word gentleness. And uh, so that's in yesterday because I'm going through the New Testament. And so yesterday I was in Colossians chapter three. And uh, I just, I read that and I go, I got, I got I, how come I haven't talked to the guys about this? And uh, so, so yeah, so today I, I want to talk to you about the, the big picture. Um, what is going on in my life in recovery? What's the big picture? And, uh, and these are things that sometimes uh, that we forget. Uh, and, and in so doing, we end up missing some, uh, some strengthening points that will help us in hard times. And so, so yeah, so I want to talk to you about the, the big picture. Um, matter of fact, this is the, this is the um, you know, let's just say that uh, we're, we're in a shot in a stadium. There's a football stadium or something like BC line, you know, BC place or whatever it's called now. And, 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 and there's, a, there's a shot of the game. And actually that section over there, section 119, about 24 rows up, three in, uh, is where you're sitting. Now you can actually, in the picture, you say, well, <laughs> that little dot there, that's me. See, see the guy in the red, I'm three over from that? That's me in this picture, okay? So what happens is you got to understand the big picture is what's going on. Like it's actually showing the bigness of the stadium, showing the football game. Who knows why they shot this big shot that had all the crowd in it. But you were actually in the crowd, you know, that section, that row, that seat. And you can point out that dot, even though no one would recognize it's you. What you've got to understand when we take the big picture, it helps us because it, it shows where we fit in. It shows where we are. It shows what's going on that's bigger than me. Sometimes it feels like the, 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 the shot was taken and there's no one else in the stadium but me. And I'm in that same row, same section, you know, same seat. And obviously there's no one else in there. So you can see, well, there you are sitting there because there's no one else in the stadium. Sometimes it feels like we're alone in the stadium. Sometimes it feels like the big picture. It's just me. It's just about me. But the big picture is a lot of people in this journey. And there's, there, there's, there's, there's God doing some amazing things in your life through this bigger picture of what he's done. And Easter was a scream and representation reminder of the death and resurrection of Jesus and what that means to us as Christians. And um, over the course of the weekend, uh, Good Friday, I read everything from the Last Supper up to the crucifixion. And then Monday morning, sorry, Sunday morning early, I was up and I just read everything from, from the crucifixion to the resurrection and then his ascension. And I, and I try to do that every year. I just listen, you know, read it over and over and just, you know, those, those, you know, four uh, books of the New Testament. And it was just really encouraging. So, so today when we're going to look at the big picture, the big picture includes the past, the present, and the future. And I've broken up the past into, uh, sorry, the present into two things. The present reality, what is true about me, and the present responsibility, what I'm called to do. So, so let me walk through this. Obviously, the past, we know what we're talking about here. The past is what has already taken place. It's behind you. That's the past. Then we have the present reality. This is the current truth about me. This is my reality. This is, this, is, uh, this is true about me right now, how it really is. This is part of the big picture. Then the present responsibility, which sometimes we get focused on exclusively, say, oh, I got to do this. 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 And we forget the big picture that this past is behind us. This present reality is true about me. How well I do my present responsibility is another story. But it doesn't change the present reality. And then there's the future. What's coming next? What is going to happen for sure? So keep those in mind. Because what I've done 
with this particular passage in Colossians chapter three is I've highlighted with bold and four different colors, black, blue, red, and purple. I've highlighted different parts of the bigger picture. What is the past? What is the present reality? What is the present responsibility? In other words, what I need to be doing was my part. And then the future, what I can count on. So, so I'm going to go verse by verse. And so you have it in front of you. If not, just listen. Um, but in Colossians chapter 3 in the NIV, we have this. And I love talking about God's word. So here we go. Since then, you men have been raised with Christ. You have been raised with Christ. That's the past. Raised with Christ means, it, it, just like uh, we saw some photos, uh, uh, you know, some video footage of a baptism that took place recently at our church, and, and raised with Christ, it's, it's the symbol of raised with him in his death and resurrection, right? Baptism is dying and being raised, so that's the baptism action, right? You've been raised with Christ. Because you surrendered your life to him, you already are raised with Christ, and because of that, it tells you a present responsibility, so set your hearts. Okay, your hearts is your passions, your 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 desires. Um, sets your what you're chasing after in life. Sets your hearts on things above. And what does they mean by things above? Where Christ is. Now, it's not just talking specifically about set your mind up in heaven where Jesus is, but where is Jesus right now? Well, first of all, He's in me. He's in me. Christ in me, the hope of glory. When a person becomes a Christian, he becomes the brand new person in, inside. It's, it's Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit living in me that transformed me. So, so I set my heart on the reality of where Christ is. He is in me. He's working in me. And yes, he's also seated at the right hand of God. He's taking care of things for me. So, so I set my heart and passion on these things, knowing, 100% knowing that Christ is the representative of God to us all that Christ is um, seated at the right hand of God, but he is also in me. So I set my heart, my passions, my, my desires, uh, what I want to see accomplished in my life, I set it in conjunction with what Christ would want if he was sitting right here beside me. What do you want, Jesus? Where are you? Well, he's right here with me. It goes on to say in verse 2, set your minds on things above. First, things above means what would God want? Things above. So you set your 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 heart, your passions, desires, and your, your kind of focus, but then you, you set your minds. Set your minds. That means you, you're anchored by the truth of what's important. We're going we're to keep focusing on what's important, not on earthly things. Now, that's really hard because our addiction has taken us along the earthly things road for some time. Some time. And, and so, so that's where we, we're our present responsibility is to set your heart okay I, i'm going i'm going to focus on what christ wants my heart to be doing i'm going to focus my mind on truth on things above not on earthly things not on you know just just the things that would draw us away uh verse three for you died I mean, that's already taken place when you've given your life to christ you joined him in his death you accepted Christ's death for you. And, and uh, uh, matter of fact, uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 1, it says, I urge you, brothers and sisters, to view God's mercy, that you present your body to God a living sacrifice, that you actually put yourself on the altar and say, Jesus, I give you my life. I surrender my life. I give my life to you. You have died in Christ. And your life, this is so powerful. This is a present reality. you got to start grabbing your life is hid with Christ in God. Um, I, I got to illustrate. Let me grab some. Okay. Uh, I have, I have uh, right over here to this side. Let me just go like that. Okay. So it follows me. Come on. There we go. Okay. So, so come over here and you'll see. I have, uh, come on a little farther. I have a bubblegum machine. You can see it. And uh, the, the agreement is with the grandkids, every time they leave, I have over there on my shelf, I have a little box filled with pennies and they get a penny and they put the penny in the machine and they get to take gum with them. So, so I'm illustrating with the gum ball here that uh, uh, it was actually one of the moms says, mommy, oh, you know, you, you take one too. And they said, here, dad, you can put these back in. I don't chew these little things anyway. But so I have one here. So when it says this, 
Your life is now hidden with Christ in God. This is your life, this little red bubblegum. Your life is hid with Christ, so now it's in my hand. And now, over top of that hand is God. The bubble gum is hid in the hand, covered by the other hand. Your life, the red bubble gum, is in Christ, in God. Now, you want to be safe? Your present reality, like, like you know how you play a game here. I, I, I'll, I'll give you this loony, kids, if you can open my hand. And, you know, you got a five-year-old, right? And they're trying to wrench on the fingers and open it up because they want the loony so bad and they're pulling and everything. And, and you kind of let it go a little bit. Then you close it because they, with, with pulling with both hands, those kids can't open. Now, when they start to get 12, 13, they're, they're getting a little more power. But understand, if there's any place in the world that you are safe, your life is hidden in Christ, in God. You got the double whammy of go ahead, try to get unsafe right now. Try, because your life is hidden with Christ in God. That is your present reality. And when Christ, verse 4, who is your life, that's your present reality. When you give your life to Christ, he makes a difference in me. He does the work in me. He is your life. He changes things. Now, I need to be obedient and do certain things. That's my present responsibilities. But Christ is my life. When he appears, look at this. Then you will also appear with him in glory. There's the future. That's what's coming next. That's what's going to happen for sure. When Christ, who is your life, who you are, you are hidden in Christ, in God. When Christ, when he appears, who is your life, by the way? He's your life. It's not your life. He is your life. He's working in you. When Christ, who is your life, appears, you will also appear with him in glory. So that's the future, what's coming next. But interesting, it doesn't say this. So, you know, when Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also appear if you, if you, if you get your act together. You will also appear if you, if you work hard enough. You see, you don't appear because of your good works. You can never achieve salvation by nailing it, by, I got this, I did this. Yeah, God's going to, well done, Dave, well done. You say, well, David says, well done, my good and faithful servant. That's because of being faithful to what he's asked you to do. But, but it's not, it's not, it doesn't merit my salvation. My salvation is Christ alone. You died and your life is hid with Christ and God. Your life is established because of Jesus, not because of something you do. Now, we live in gratitude for what he's done. And so we have responsibilities. Set your hearts on Christ up in heaven. Set your minds on what he wants for you, not on earthly things. <clears throat> Those are responsibilities. But when Christ, who is your life, appears you will also appear with him in glory. That means it's going to happen. That's the future. And because of that, here's the present responsibility. The red, of course, is what we could be doing. Put to death. Okay, I, I, the picture came to mind. My wife hates spiders. Matter of fact, she hates most bugs. But all of a sudden, I hear the David! <laughs> so, so maybe I woke her, I don't know. But, but I hear that, and I go, oh, there's a bug or something. So we got these shield bugs that come in through some of the fans and stuff, and she just hates those. And that's the thing right now. And, and the other day she was sweeping on the deck. I see one of those bugs. She's got a broom. She's got a broom. So, so this little bug's on the ground. Now it flies, so she's a little bit afraid of it. it might fly. At least spiders don't fly, but they move really fast. Well, she screams, right? And she's gonna, but you know what? When, when she's a little bit terrified and she wants to make sure that that bug is gone, she's going, stamp, stop, bam, bam, bam. Now the first one killed. Her. But there's just a sense that she's going to put it to death, death, death. You know, like she's going to be sure, right? And, and, and so, you know, it's like she's going, die, 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 you bad bug, die, die. You know what I mean? And, and the first kick would have done it. And so, so here's what you got to do. Jesus, you're in me. Give me strength to do this. But die, 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 all you darn things that are screwing me up and making me a man who's not of integrity and making me a disgrace to my wife. I don't want those things in my life. I want to follow Jesus. I want to do it his way. So die, die, die. Like go after it. Like you're, you're afraid of these things. And we should be cautious about some of these things. 
Notice it says, put to death, die, die, die. Okay, put to death whatever belongs to your earthly nature. Well, that's pretty clear. And, and when I was reading this just yesterday morning, I was thinking, oh my goodness. I think, I think Paul wrote this for men in recovery. But so, so what are we supposed to put to death there for all these things that belong to earthly nature? Let's look at it. Oh, sexual immorality. Oh, impurity. Oh, lust, evil desires, greed. Hmm. I don't know who that's talking about because it wouldn't be anybody on this call. Oh, God, holy. Thank you, Lord, for being so clear. I got to say, die, die, die to anything in this direction. I don't want to go there. I'm not going to go there. I am hid with Christ and God. I am in him. He has saved me. He's redeemed me. And out of gratitude, I'm going to go after those bugs in my life with a broom and go, die, 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 die. And so, so anything along these lines here, sexual purity, uh, immor immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, these are all the things that pull us away from Christ. And we do not do these things to get our salvation. Our salvation is set. That's the, that's the craziest thing about grace. We, we don't deserve it. He gives us to us anyway. We're not here because we're doing so much better. Now Christ just thumbs up and says, okay, you can come in because you're good enough. Uh-uh. It's not about that. We'll never be good enough. But we do have his present responsibilities to do our part to put things to death. That means we... When tempted, we call a brother. Uh, when we're struggling, we, we pop on some worship music. We, we uh, quote some verses. We call a friend. We, uh, uh, we do whatever we need to do to take the dang broom and go, die, die, die. And I just, I like, I, I'll be honest. Uh, this has helped me for years. If you pray out loud, especially if you say Jesus' name out loud, his name out loud brings his presence. And in his presence, I don't willfully sin. Because he's here. Jesus, help me. Jesus, help me. That's all you got to do is Jesus, help me. And, and so, so what happens is, is, is you do your part. That's your present responsibility. Notice it says, because of these, when people aren't surrendered to Christ and they live this way, because of these, notice what it says. The wrath of God is coming. Now, not for those whose life is hid, with Christ in God, because when you're in Christ, you're forgiven past, present, and future. Your salvation is not conditional on your performance. My performance, my present responsibility is my response of gratitude to what Jesus is doing for me. And I'm going to go die, die. I'm working with you, Jesus, you and me. But it's true that people who don't live surrendered to Christ, their chosen lifestyle is going to hold them guilty. And the verse seven is good. It says, you used to walk in these ways. That's the past. You used to walk in these ways. In the life you once lived, you used to walk in these ways. That can't be normative for you. You, you got to keep going with the broom. Die, die, die. I, I don't want this in my life. And I battle. It is a battle. Uh, Kyle put a wonderful talk uh, suggested there about how we're, we're, we're brothers in arms. And it is a battle. It's a war. And it is a war. Get your broom up and smack the bugs in your life. Jesus, it, it, but, but remember, smacking the bugs doesn't get you saved. Th that is, I'm working with you, Jesus. I want to follow you. And you're smacking the bugs. You're, you're saying, die, die, die to these things. But you used to walk in these ways. You didn't say, die, die. Oh, come on. This bugs crawl over here. There's more here. You want to see more bugs? I got a lot of it. Bugs all over the place, right? Um, understand that, that you used to walk in the ways in the life that you once lived. But when you surrender your life to Christ and your life is now hid with Christ in God and you, when you believe what he's done for you and it's because of his grace that you stand, not because of your perfect obedience, things change. Now, interesting, it also gives another challenge of things you're supposed to do. Verse 8 says this. Now you must also, you must also. That means, well, okay, we talked about put the dead these things. Now get the broom out. Here's some more bugs we want you to beat out of your life. You must also rid yourselves of such things as these. We're listening a few more. Anger, rage, malice, slander, filthy language from your lips. Rid yourself of these. Die, 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 die. I don't want to do this. I will not lose my cool again. I'll say, hey, honey, get, you know, uh, uh, get, give me time to calm down. Give me, give me 
got to reset here because I, I don't want to respond this way anymore. And uh, the idea of uh, you know, slander, malice is malicious thoughts, not malicious actions. Malice is, is malicious thing. And uh, <clears throat> so you must rid yourselves. Die, 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 those things. And it goes on, verse 9, do not lie to each other. I was thinking, man, in regroup, this is so important. Because a lot of times we come to the group and we kind of, we, we tell enough to look like we're being honest. You know what I'm saying? We, we tell enough to kind of convince the other guys that, yeah, yeah, I'm on track. But we, we, we don't admit sometimes the hard reality of where we struggle or, or the temptations we're facing. And, and we're maybe on a slow course to a relapse, but we don't speak it out. You know, we don't break the silence to break the power. So, so, so you just don't lie to one another. You be honest. You, you disclose. You volunteer. Notice it says, since you have taken off the old self, you have. Like it's, it's uh, I mean, um, okay, stay with me. I'm doing this. I just thought of it. So hang on. Um, so I'm, I'm, pulling, I'm pulling this shirt off. I'm taking off the old self, okay? I'm taking off. This is the old self. I'm taking it off, and I'm going to, uh, oh, this will work better. I'm putting on the new self, which is, uh, this is Christ's robe of righteousness on me, okay? Okay, this looks really goofy, so shut up. I don't care. But, 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 but you see now, the, the old self, I, I, I've taken it off. I, I took it off. I don't want to be that anymore. And uh, uh, if I'd have been thinking, I would have had a, another code handy, but this, this will work for the illustration. So, so what happens is, I, I, I've taken off the old self with all its practices, and I've put on the new self. i put on this new garment. Notice it's Christ's righteousness over me. The illustration works with the white. So, so I put on a new self, and notice what it is. This new self is, and this is the present reality, this new self is being renewed in the knowledge of the image of its creator. It's being renewed. It's being uh, transformed by understanding more about Jesus and what he wants for you. Just like Romans uh, chapter 12, verse 2, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You see, you're renewed in knowledge about Jesus. Or, or Romans 8, 29, for those who God foreknew, he predestined that they would be conformed to the image of Jesus. That was beautiful about Dan's prayer. He said, Jesus, that we would become like you. You see, so, so I, I've taken off the old self and I put on the new self and, and, and I'm being renewed in the knowledge of it's, it's happening as I continue to learn about Jesus, read about the Lord, um, realize how he works in me, realize the present reality of what he's done for me. And, uh, and in verse 11 is interesting because uh, the, these words don't, you know, we know what they mean, but they don't make a lot of sense sometimes, but I'll just explain it as so, so there's no, neither uh, Gentile or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all in and all. It's basically saying it doesn't matter if you're young or old in regroup, married or not married, whether you're, uh, you know, you're, you're Baptist, Catholic, uh, Anglican, Mennonite. Uh, it doesn't matter whether you're a rich man or poor man. It doesn't mean whether you're retired or just starting your, your years of employment. Uh, it doesn't matter what perspective you come from. Jesus is a difference maker, and we're all equal in Christ. We're all equal. Hmm. I like the one time I, I heard it said that sharing your faith in the difference Christ makes is simply one beggar telling another beggar where to find bread. The bread's over here. There's lots of it. Come on. Come on. Join me. That's, I'm eating over there. You can join it. There's lots. See, one beggar telling another beggar where to find bread. See, see, we're all equal. We're all equal. Um, and and, and so, so Christ is all and, and is all. Um, and, and it's all, all equal. So the present reality is no one's more sinful than someone else. Now, we've had some callable choices, but we're all sinners. And it's Christ who makes a difference in all of us. Verse 12, therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved. 
See, see, the present reality is you are already God's chosen people. I was thinking about this this morning as I was preparing the talk, and I, I, I slid back to the days of uh, just playing uh, sports in my um, my neighborhood. This is not community sports like playing on a ball team or a football team, or whatever. This is this is just you know we're playing some pickup baseball down at the school, or we're we're playing touch football on a park near us, you know, kind of tackle football or whatever when you're younger, and uh, and 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 so you're going to pick sides, and so you know maybe you and another guy are the captains that are going to pick the teams, and there's you know there's ten boys there waiting to be picked. And you know what? I, I remember this feeling. Well, I don't care if Perry's the best. I'm picking Perry first because he's he's my best friend. And then Perry and I talk about who we need to pick to make a good team. Now, I might have given up a really good pick because he picked someone else that's really a good football player. But I picked Perry because Perry's my best friend. I picked Perry and that's, he was my best man at my wedding and just lived the block for me. And we played lots of these sports together, played high school football together and stuff. But, but you see, chosen. You see, you are God's chosen people. I pick you, my team, you, come on, you're my team. I got you. And it's not because you're so good at this sport of life. No, 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 no. I love you. You're, you're, you're dearly loved. You're holy because of me. Remember his robe over me. I took off the old, put on the new. And, and uh, so, so as God's chosen people, he picked you. Uh, holy and dearly loved. Now it tells you what your present responsibility is again. Clothe yourselves. The picture of putting a garment on. Clothe yourselves with these things. Compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Now, we ran into this verse last week because the verse gentleness, the word gentleness. But look at those characteristics, kindness, compassion, humility, gentleness, patience. That's what you're supposed to put on. It goes on to say in verse 13, put on this too, by the way, bear with, that's be patient with one another and forgive. Be patient with one another and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against somebody, you got a grievance with somebody, forgive. Because it says, forgive as the Lord forgave you. So the present reality sorry the past is it's already happened the lord forgave you the lord forgave you past present future jesus died on the cross we just went through easter he died on the cross to establish my my salvation he died for my sin your sin the sins of the world and and so so we got to keep remembering that we need to forgive as the lord has already forgiven us he's already he's not well i might forgive you if you live right all right and then over all these virtues, virtues, of course, are characteristics, traits, over all these traits of compassion, kindness, humility, forgiveness, patience, etc. Over all these things, put on love. Smother them all with love, which will bind them all together in perfect community. The idea being love conquers all. The greatest of these is love. And if we live a life of love and graciousness, uh, kindness towards others, if we live a life of love. By this will all people know you, my disciples, Jesus says, if you have loved one for another. So love does really bind it all together. So that's another one. Okay, I'm going to try to live a life of love. So I'm putting to death certain things, and then I'm going to clothe myself with these things. Uh -uh. And it adds another one in verse 15. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Uh, some of you might follow baseball. I'm kind of a, only a maybe playoff baseball fan, but I'll, I'll kind of watch the Blue Jays because they're kind of entertaining with some of the great young stars they got on their team. But the idea of let the peace of Christ rule. Okay, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Rule is like the word umpire. Let, let the peace of Christ arbitrate balls and strikes. You know, the umpire goes, safe or strike one or whatever. The peace of Christ is going to rule in your hearts. It's going to call the shots. Since you are already, since as members of one body, you were called to peace. So, so as one who's in Christ, I'm actually called to peace. I'm called. I'm called to be obedient to Christ. I'm called to, uh, as a member of the body, I already am. I'm a member of the body. We were all called to peace. 
So let the peace of Christ rule, umpire, call it as it is. Walk in peace, Curry. And it goes on to say, be thankful. Be thankful. See, the, the reason why we, we want to live out these present responsibilities is because of gratitude. Thank you, Jesus, for what you've done for me. Thank you, Jesus, that my life is hid with Christ in God, that I am safe. As a matter of fact, in, in John chapter 10, it's verse 27, I believe it says, no one can ever snatch them out of my hand. Jesus talks about those that God has given him and that they were safe in him and no one can pluck them, take them, snatch them out of his hand. Verse 16, let the message of Christ dwell among you richly. You see, one of the things in your present responsibilities is let the message of Christ dwell in you richly. Um, I have my Bible here. And this is one of my numerous Bibles. But if you, if you open this Bible, there isn't a page that doesn't have writing, notes, you know, because at some point, a Bible that is falling apart belongs to someone who isn't. Wear your dang Bible out. Let the message of Christ dwell in you richly, not cheaply. Yeah, yeah, I, I sorry, I, I didn't get to it this week. Uh, oh, yeah, you know, I, I should be reading my Bible. How many times have you said that? Shut up, grow up, and just make it a priority. And just have a, a, a baseline of at least I will read one chapter a day and think about it as I go into my day. At least do that. You know, there'll be times you might read chunks of it at a time as I did during the Easter weekend, but, but that's not my norm. My norm is I will at least read a chapter, and study it, mark it up every day. But see, let the, the word of Christ, the message of Christ dwell in you richly. And then I was thinking, oh my goodness, this was a great week for this next part. As you teach and admonish, admonishers call each other to greatness. That's a little bit of grit there. As you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom. Some of you guys have such wisdom. You're reflecting the Lord's heart over and over and over again. And uh, I just, I, I saw it this week as you said things to one. And it says, and with all wisdom through Psalms, that's like scripture. Hymns, some of you are saying, hey, listen, this is a great song. Let it encourage you. And so you give each other uh, scripture. You give each other uh, devotionals, uh, hymns, songs. Um, and, uh, and, 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 and you're just supporting one another. Notice it says, with gratitude in your hearts. There's that gratitude thing again. Uh, thank you, Lord, for what you've done for me. So let, let, the, let the message of Christ, your present responsibility is, let it dwell in you richly. Just, just keep reading, keep growing. In verse 17, we'll end with that. And whatever you do, gentlemen, whether it's in what you say or what you do in word or deed, whatever you do, word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. <clears throat> do it all in the way that, that honors him. Whatever you do, everything you do, put, put your life right out there on the altar. Jesus, I want my life to honor you. I want my life to, um, I want my life to fully reflect you being there in my life. And there it is, giving thanks again. We do this because we're giving thanks for what he's given us. My present responsibilities, I do not to inherit grace. I do this in response to grace. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. And whatever I do, I want to honor you. I want to honor you. So here's, here's the summary, the big picture of my life in recovery. Here's the summary. Realize who you are in Christ. You are in him and he is in you. Your life is hid with Christ in God. What he, you've already died with him and you were raised with him. Realize who you are in Christ. It's what he's done for you. His righteousness over you. Number two, remember all he's done for you. It's done. He even said on the cross, it is finished. It is completed. He did the work to cover your sin. We need to surrender to him. Number three, were it possible, but relish the power and the immensity of his grace. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. It's just so immense. 
Matter of fact, when I tried to speak on grace, you might remember if some of you were on that call at the end of that time, I lost it and I just sobbed because I can't understand God's grace. Why it's not about my performance. It's about what he's done for me. Relish, that means just enjoy the power and the immensity of his grace. It doesn't make sense. Number four, rest in his promise that he is enough. It is a gift given you. And in a gift, you don't pay for a gift by nature is something you receive with gratitude. Thank you. Rest in his promise. And then, yeah, recommit daily to live surrender to him. Jesus, I give you my life today. I give you my life today. I want to follow you. I want to go die, 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 die to those bugs. I want, I want to be a man of integrity, Jesus. But thank you that you're enough. Thank you, Jesus, of what you've given me. I'm so grateful. I want to live in gratitude. So you talk to him often, live surrendered to him each day, and then talk to him often. And then number six, respond by living a life of gratitude through obedience. Gratitude through obedience. Thank you, Jesus. And I want to walk in obedience to you, knowing that my life is hid with Christ in God. So taking off the old self and put on the new self, I'm going to follow Christ. And so there's there's a bit of a picture of what's going on, the big picture, what's going on in your life and recovery, the past, the present reality, your present responsibilities, and the future. I hope you find understanding what God is doing in you and through you as an encouragement today. All right, let's talk about it.